this production is part of the Game Fire Network. Netcast for gamers by gamers. Welcome to Game Fire. We interrupt this program to bring you a special news bulletin from Allied High Command. Last night in a daring midnight raid in an Axis prisoner of war camp, Allied forces rescued famed War Office of Information correspondent Codename Vittensby. He was unavailable for comment, but the official word is that he is healthy and will return to broadcasting this week. Thank you. We now return you to your regularly scheduled programming. Welcome one, welcome all, welcome to another exciting episode of Tales of Heroes, right here on the GameFire Network, www.gamefire.com, G-A-M-E-F-I-R-E.com. We've got a great match for you today, we've got Reborn versus the uh, Laid guys, Constantly Laid Nystrom and Laid by a Hobo versus Nihilistic God Reborn, Nuvian and Savvykin Reborn, this is gonna be a great game. You can just tell. It's probably no, nothing's gonna top last week's game, but I guarantee you we're gonna have a good game here. Hill 331 is the map. We have not seen this map in quite a while, so I'm very excited to see how this one plays out. It's it's one of the one of the old beta maps, and it was just it's it's an oldie but a goodie. So we'll see how this one plays out. And again, returning from captured German lines is my good co-host Vittensby. Welcome to the program. It's uh, great to be back. Yes, we had a quite an interesting little day yesterday, shall we say, uh, but it was very important that we got the show out on time to you guys, so uh, Bridger went ahead, and uh, for the first time in 46 weeks, did one without me, but uh, I believe, from what I hear, it turned out really good, so I'm sure you guys will be enjoying that. Um, breaking the theme, basically what happened was, two nights ago, I was watching uh, one of the George Carlin DVDs. And uh, he's ranting about, you know, if you want to go back to the Stone Age, all that has to happen is you just basically cut electricity. Well, like a curse, I woke up the next morning, the power's off, and it was off all day, so I wasn't able to record yesterday. But I got a pretty good track record, 46 weeks, and I am uh, I've broke out of the, the sauna that was Los Angeles, and uh, now I'm back in a nice air-conditioned room, ready to, uh, ready to broadcast this great match for That's you guys. Right. Still got 46 weeks of videos, though. You're still in there, 47 now. So we've still got the record going. And, uh, you know, actually next week, next week of the week after is our, uh, our one-year anniversary. So we'll still have to see what we can do about that coming up on one year here. This is a pretty impressive record so far for me and I'm sure for you as well. So let's get into the game. Uh, as we said, uh, Reborn versus Laid. And this is going to be a great game. We have Reborn on the Axis side and laid on the Allied side. You're going to be watching from the American side? Uh, yeah, I switched over to the American side. The one thing I wanted to do was, uh, let's see, someone guessed, who was it? Bridger, you remember the comment? Oh, Damn it, I, I you know, forward. I don't remember someone, the name. I'm looking, looking very, very steadily at the site. <sighs> Just be a second. Well, in the meantime, oh, here we go. Uh, da -da 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 there we go. Uh, Ethan Steele was correct. Yes. He answered Death Cab for Cutie, and the album is Plans. So I have another one of those little trivias. I'm listening to a different album. Uh, the name of the band starts with The, and the first initial is S, and the last initial is S. And then the album I'm listening to, the initials of it are W, T, A. So if you can Say take a guess, we'll give you another Broke shout up a little out bit. Next week's show. Uh, basically, the uh, the artist is the, and then starts with an S, ends with an S, and the album is initials is R W T N N A. W as in Wilco, T as in train, uh, N as in uh, nihilistic, and A as in alpha. Okay. I totally yep. butchered that. But let's go into the game. Five seconds on the clock. Let's get her started in five, four, three, two, one. Unpause. All right, so we're going to see how this game breaks down. Now, again, this this map normally has a lot of fighting going on around these plus five fuel points in the middle. Fuel is very scarce on this map. You only have a total of six plus five, I'm sorry, seven, uh, eight plus five fuel points total. 
and usually these two in the middle are, are very heavily fought over because those are also, if you can take those and block off access to those areas, you can hold the right or left side fairly easily because that road is a major intersection for getting to the right and left side. And again, the right and left side not only have victory points, they have the only plus 10. Uh, actually, no, not anymore. They did fix it. So they don't have the only plus 10. They have the only other plus 10 munitions points on the map in addition to the one that's at your base. So looking yep. at the main screen here, we've got a one pioneer start for two of the axis and a two pioneer start for nihilistic god and one of the interesting things to note is that uh, who is that in center uh, nystrom decided to go weapon support center um, i always found weapon support center worked a little bit better on the sides because you have that those all important little uh, huts or what would you mean sheds shacks those yeah. little buildings um so i thought usually it was better there but uh as a weapon support, he's going to probably end up supporting the other two with uh, his machine guns and snipers, so that could uh, work out. Um, First uh, miniature skirmish. I think the, the, uh, the last matchup we had uh, on Hill, Nystrom was actually in it against uh, Mexico and company, so uh, he's uh, probably a pretty experienced player on this map. Looks like we have uh, is that a mortar first? or did I Yeah, MG then mortar opening from Nystrom and uh, Typical rifle spam coming on the uh, on the flank. Yeah, we got the bike doing a little bit of harassment here on the right, just trying to figure out what's coming. Good uh, scouting with the bike there. Usually the bike is very is so fast and quick to turn and quick to get out of there that you can send the bike out very far forward, just like he did, and see what kind of enemy you're facing. You know, so you know whether okay, well, I need to bring both my pioneers up here to face this, or you know, we got a machine gun, so I'm gonna change quickly to get a sniper or what have you. In this case, I do not know if he noticed these riflemen here. He saw the engineers over there and he was harassing them a little bit. But uh, we have a mortar going out on the right, it looks like. And did the machine gun go to the left? Yeah, it went to the left. It's in the house. Uh, good suppression on Savvy's bolts, which is why... Wow. The, uh, the, the story with the chat is that uh, apparently Savvy's mic was kind of messed up or something, so they had to... Uh, Type. So you'll get a little insight on what was partially going on in this game, considering the rest of the, the guys were on vent. Uh, they, as the action unfolds, usually you'll either get the fuel on one side or the munitions on one side and likewise on the other. It's pretty pretty difficult, and, and as well as the VP, it's pretty difficult to hold the fuel and the munitions just because they're so kind of far from each other. Yep, we got a... Uh Volks and versus rifles here, and they're both in the open, but uh, the Volks got bike backing up. Bike does, you know, a little bit more damage than the... Oh, wow, actually, looks like very close to fully capping this fuel on the right, but the mortar team that's over here actually prevented them from taking it. Looks like we're going to have an early reborn uh, victory point lead. Uh, I've mentioned this a couple times on the show. I'm going to give you guys the Hill 331 challenge. And uh, the challenge is, you play as Axis, you play on high resources, you play Annihilation, and uh, you have to win with all, and you go, all three of you have to go Defense Doctrine, and you win with only building Walking Stupids. <laughs> it is possible. And uh, just uh, the general consensus of strategy, not to take too much away from the game, but uh, cap all the points, most of the points are by your base and uh, go ahead and uh, try to push out from there, building massive bunkers, AT guns, slacks, etc. It's, it's good fun. Walking Stukas are amazingly good. They're just so awesome. I mean, they're nothing compared to, I don't know, a Calliope, I guess, but it's like the best kind of thing that the Axis has to compare. Um, now, again, like you said, the Reborn guys on the north here are have taken the victory point lead, and they still got a connection to the right-hand side, so they're getting the resources over here on the right as well. Um, whoops, got a weird terrain bug there. We've got a sniper coming up as well. Yep, and early bars from uh, Dave, aka constantly laid on the uh, left-hand side, just got suppressed and uh, pretty much bulk spammed the hell out of there. Uh, it's an interesting little division that we, we have going on here with Reborn kind of claiming the right side and Laid taking the left side. We've got uh, quite a bit of Volk spam coming up here from Savvykin. He's trying hard to take this left side. 
And we've got, uh, what is this, tank traps going up in the north here. He's trying to really secure these points. That's one thing that you have been able to do in the past on Hill, is just cut off these choke points with massive amounts of defenses and things like that. And one of the best strategies on the right secure the uh, the whole upper area is to push down hard to that plus five fuel. That whole little basin right there is uh, it's pretty crucial. If they lose that fuel, you have quite quite a big advantage. And if you can hold them there with the bunkers, so that's uh, I remember Soldier when we played on this map in beta. That was his main. He loved playing on the uh, the right side. That was usually his main objective. The Nation's mortar is retreating on the right. It looks like laid by a hobo, aka Robo, I believe. Uh, he got fast bars as well. Um, interesting. I they didn't get grenades, did they? Um, I don't know. I'm not on the Allies, am I? <laughs> no, I was just wondering if you saw any grenades. Oh no, I haven't seen any grenades yet. No, I'm sorry. Wow, massive amounts of rifle spam on the left-hand side, because now that the Axis have all three points, there's a lot of pressure. And, uh-oh. Uh is this a weird machine gun? No, the machine gun is there. I thought it was a machine gun bug where I couldn't see the machine gun. He's just replacing it. This is one of those tough places to hold now, because they've got riflemen that can come in from three directions here. And, uh... Savikin's going to do the best of it, but right now, those tickets are going to be gone, or the victory points, rather, are going to be gone very quickly. You know, getting all three together is uh, a massively... Uh-oh, uh-oh. There's no way he can cover both approaches. He's in trouble with his one machine gun over here. It's not even firing. That's really weird. There it goes. Okay, it was pointed in the wrong direction. Finally gets in the right direction, and it gets killed. Yeah. Has to retreat fully. That's very good flanking by the allies there. It was constantly laid... All around. <laughs> That's a, weird way of it. a fun little strategy to do is, is if you notice by the VPs, if you're going for a munitions based strategy and you want to completely ignore the fuel, you can go for a quick cap of the strap point there, lay down an early bunker. Um, you can also lay down early MG emplacement, just uh, don't build there, don't build your barracks quite yet. Uh, it's just another little strategy that uh, I used to fool around with with my friends on this particular map. I've seen people use the, um, ooh, nice push with a machine gun over here as well. I've seen people you put forward barracks in these buildings in the in the corners as well, and more specifically this one here, um, only because, uh, you know, it's just be so easy to defend this corner if you could reinforce there instead of having running all the way to the top or the bottom of the map. I think we just saw a Stormtrooper squad, yes indeed. Uh, Nihilistic God has gone blitz, it looks like. And we have uh, Airborne being selected by Nystrom. Uh, Woman support Airborne, always a favorite of mine. Uh, interesting points to note where you can lay mines. Um, well, the first the first place is right where that half track is in the upper left hand corner. Right there, it's pretty brutal. If you can sneak an engineer squad behind and lay a mine right at that point, and also the parallel point in the bottom right hand corner, just north of the fuel point on the little ramp, those are to lay. Ah, uh, sniper just got. Was that a sniper? No, it was a rifleman. Uh, got him by the sniper on the right. But yeah. uh, those are great places. Um, there's always stuff walking through there. Always. Sticky bomb on the half track. Yeah, yeah, I see it. Another sticky bomb. Half track's in trouble. Oh, a bundled grenade destroys those riflemen. Wow. Wow. Unfortunately, oh, they lost the motorcycle and the... Really? Did it say? Why did it say motorcycle loss? Was there a bike in there somewhere? Yeah. Wow. It's burning carcass. It's, it's right there, right <laughs> above that fresh squad. Oh no! One airborne squad versus all this. That's bad news. Yeah, that was a bad drop. Nice one should definitely cancel Ooh. that. Uh, well, it doesn't matter now. Yeah, that was that was hard. Yeah. Uh, on that particular ledge right there is also a really great place to uh, to 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 hold off in with. Paris, try to set up an MG around there. It's a pretty crucial choke point. Uh, maybe a tank trap or two as well. Looks like we have uh, the Allies pushing forward in the middle now, actually. Laid by a hobo, taking over the middle section. Quite handily, they're going to be able to take that victory point pretty American soon as well. 
Yeah, we, we're starting to see the uh, first teching going on for both sides. Uh, we do have a tank depot right now from Nystrom producing a Sherman. Uh, too bad he lost all that manpower uh, on the airborne squad. That was a pretty unfortunate um, from constantly late to Kid Dave. I think everyone knows who he is by now. And this is his, what, third appearance on the show? Uh, he's oh, gone no. motor pool, which is an interesting choice. Uh, two Pumas from ne Neolithic God at uh, Nubian. Yeah, yep. that's just gonna we lost those. a sniper on the right there. Rifleman just chased it all the way up the hill. Pumas yep, are gonna make uh, a big difference in the middle here. And two Sturms. Ah, Flamin Warfare on the left hand side ah. from Savvy. Awesome. Never played COH with Savvy, but we were doing some wick in the uh, closed beta together. We had some good games. See, that's how you use a Fleming Warfare. You gotta kite really well with it. The thing I don't like about it, though, is that um, if you notice, when it stops firing, when something gets out of range, it resets its turret, which is kind of annoying because if you're playing with an M10, or not an M10, um, a, a croc, it doesn't. It seems like it's it's easier to keep aligned with that. Uh oh, a very early Sherman with the 50 cal upgrade. Pumas are in trouble. Good night. There's one gone. Is the other one still alive? Yeah, two more still alive up here. Gonna have to be upgrading those storms now. There they are. Yeah, that's right. I've been to since I started playing in pretty heavily. Just the eff effectiveness of the up gun on the Puma. Uh, now that everyone gets armor skirts. Um, it's definitely good that it's in tier 3 again, but it just doesn't feel all that effective to me. Maybe it's just, maybe it's just the fact that armor skirts are 25 munitions cheaper and seem to upgrade a lot faster. I don't think that matters because it's, it's, it's Puma's still going to win if it's got the up gun. It's just going to take a little longer with the armor skirts on there. We're losing territory. Yep. And the... Uh, the thing I always love about the Flamin Warfare compared to the Croc is you can just attack two targets at once with the Flamin Warfare, one on each side of you. The only problem is if you got two rifle squads on either side of you, even if they don't use sticky bombs, they're taking a lot of damage. Yep. It's just a little bit too vulnerable to regular small arms fire. It seems significantly more vulnerable than the Axis half track, which I'm not sure why that is. We might see a bundled nade in here. We got two Down storm squads right. cloaking around. And that could completely wipe out a four man, mostly damaged rifleman squad. We got uh, Dave's M8 trying to chase down that Flamin Warfare. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> here they go. Uh, Sherman really should not. Be, yeah, okay, there no. we go. Nice Sherman backs the hell out of there. He's trying. Is he going to make it? Yep. He's gonna make it. Wow, that's impressive. Five percent bug again. Oh, jeez. All these riflemen already suppressing one storm squad. Really need a machine gun over here to take care of that kind of rifleman spam. Only Nystrom could have pulled out of that ambush with his Sherman. I remember yeah. this one, one game he played with against EXE. This one Sherman survived the entire game and got down to about that much health at least ten times. I'm sure he probably remembers it. There's I think it might have actually been a silver replay over on game replay. Yeah, this is, this is definitely one of those situations. He's trying to pull him into this machine gun here. And he might get it. He did. They're way into it now. They're going to get chewed to pieces. Nice counter ambush. Look at that. Three rifle squads wash up and chase the two storms back. And then he's just got a mass of infantry waiting for him. That was very nice. Very well done. On the uh, left-hand side, real quick, if you look to the crater next to the plus five fuel, you'll see the MG. Uh, if you scroll down just a little bit onto the cliff, a great place to put a bunker is not on that uh, the second like uh, ridge, so to speak, but the, the first ridge. You can actually place a bunker there, and it, it locks down that whole avenue of approach uh, very good. Yeah. Now we've got a Flemenwerfer. Why would you drive your Flemenwerfer right into a Sherman? I don't know, but he's yeah, trying anyway. Yeah, it's really dangerous. Did he already flame the uh, the AT gun that was over here? Is that gone? I know I saw one over here. He's trying to get it out. Damaged engine. Yeah, there's no control. way that's surviving. Good night. They must have killed the AT gun. I don't see it. 
That's really weird. Oh no, maybe that's it. Hold it down when you saw the Fleming Warper. Yeah, 3v3s are definitely chaotic. Nice cooperation in the middle here, though. We got the two storm squads completely destroying that uh, any armor that's going to come up here. Yeah, Savvy has a medic bunker on the left-hand side. Volk suppressing. Uh, what the hell suppressed that? MP40, something suppressed those uh, riflemen. Uh, Volks with level 1 veterancy. It looks like uh, Dave transported with the half-track. Oh, and half-track just got owned on the left. Was that a Panzerfaust? Uh, yeah, Panzerfaust. But he, uh, he did made good use of that half-track. A lot of people forget that half-track's not just about the quad, it's about transporting and reinforce, reinforcing. Yeah. And I think we have, uh, Sabikin might be defensive here, because I think he's put his guys next here to, to reinforce. Let's see if it, that's what he gets to do here. Yep. Only two riflemen left, and they're able to suppress all these guys here. Another, uh, another half-track for the Axe is about to get sticky damaged engine right there. Check out the middle again. A croc out of control before it just ambush. Oh my god! <laughs> uh. Are you kidding me? I didn't know you there's two st <laughs> If I'm going down, I'm taking you with me, Crouch! Rawr! Some crazy trucker going nuts over there. Did I really just see that an out of control croc take out five storms by running them yeah. over? Yeah, and wow. now we got. Now we got the uh, the Volks Grenadiers here. I think are gonna pick up the Panzer Shrek. <laughs> oh, the the Rifleman got one too. Oh man, that was terrible. That was really bad luck. I don't even know if you can call that overpowered. That was just ridiculous. A nice bundle <laughs> nade too there. And it looks like we got an AT gun shooter from somewhere. Yeah, there it is. See, what I want to know is how is it this AT gun manages to hit the Stug on the other side of the hill? How does that work? The Stug is over here. It's on the other side of the hill, and it was getting shot at. It's really weird. I think DGN put it pretty gracefully a long time ago that even though COH looks like it's multi-layered, it's not really multi-layered. Yeah. <laughs> multi-layered for multiple users? <laughs> I don't know. That's that's when we interviewed him about the uh, world builder in the fall. I remember him saying yeah. something like that. We were talking about Eater Dam, I believe. Heavy machine gun team. Is that an MG42? I think it might be. Yeah. He stole the MG that was over here. That's the MG that the. Oh! Nice grenade! Was that a st bundle grenade? I think it was. Killed the machine gun. Now they can get it back if they can push this guy off. They really need that that machine gun to fight these masses of riflemen if they can. What the? That sniper just died somehow. Right in the center. Odd. Is that what the OMG was? Yeah, I believe so. Oh man, look at that. That could have been perfect for a bundled nade. I think he's sneaking behind to get this AT gun. Allies could definitely use uh, a half track in the middle here for reinforcing. Ooh! Just lost the bullet squad. Nice! Bundle grenade got four of them. That was a pretty good use. Sniper in the middle, allied sniper. Earning his keep. Yeah, VPs are, uh, are ticking down for, for late right now. Looks like we have either strafing run. Yeah, strafing run coming. Oh, God! Did it get that entire storm squad? And a couple other pioneers, yep. Wow. Off. One thing to note, if you go just north of the VP and to the left of those two craters, do not, I repeat, do not build a howitzer in the one that's right right below the big one. It will bug out and you can't turn it. At least that happened to me once or the twice. The one close to the munitions point? If you go to the, yeah, to the center VP, and then just up and to the left. There's a couple trees and like two, one yep. large crater, okay, one smaller. <laughs> Building that small crater, the howitzer can't turn in there. So don't ask me why I ever built it in there, but well, that's a good tip, I guess. Get cover. 
Volks versus rifles. Rifles are forced to retreat here in the middle here. Actually, at, wow, allies have pushed all the way back to the left and cut off the axis from the left-hand side. Look at this. They also and took their fuel. infantry suppression. Yeah, I mean, some people have mentioned about how infantry-centric this game has become recently, with the exception of, like, the Tiger, Tiger and the Pershing. I mean, how much has the Stug and the Sherman played a part in this game so far? You know what I mean? Yep. Back in the day, it would have been all about scamming Shermans. I think, right, I think it's, I think it's the prominence of the Shrek and the Allied AT gun. You weaken those two just a little bit, and we see a bit more combined arms. Just a bit more, which is probably what we need. Yep. Tiger Ace should be coming out sometime soon if it's not already. I saw him post a message about that a long time ago. He said Tiger Ace in one minute or something. So I'm wondering where it is. Fly be Barrage. Oh, yeah. Hitting his own guys a little bit there. Killed about as much of his stuff as he did of, uh, killed as much of his friend's stuff as he did of the enemy. Yeah. Pack 38 dead over here. He's really got to be careful with that Pershing, I and mean, now it's unsupported. He should really just pull back because you know, he knows he knows blitz. He knows he's seen blitz, so it'd be pretty smart to uh, just, just get out of there. Yeah, get out of there and repair it. Interesting that um, one of them got the Tiger Ace before the Blitz player here even got his Tiger yet. A nice room's really not Sherman. taking into consideration that there's masses of stormtroopers everywhere. But uh, I guess he, uh, the, the micro god that he is, he's able to get it out of there again. There's the tiger race popped onto the field there. Oh no, that's a regular tiger. No tiger race yet. Whoa! Ambushed on the way down by Volks Grenadiers! With a Shrek! Killed the Pershing. Wow! Nice. I didn't realize it was quite that low. Well, it looks like the uh, Stormtrooper's Holy Spirit uh, embraced in that Panzer Shrek after <laughs> being run over by the Croc got revenge for the revenge of the Croc. <laughs> now it looks like finally on the right here, laid by a hobo, is managing to take back this area so he's gonna get the victory point over there and then it starts gonna start ticking down on the uh, on the axis side they've had at least two points for most of this game a good chunk look at this look at this we don't want this barrier between us. let's tear down these walls and hedges so the middle can easily flood to the left and take our victory point or vice versa yeah Lade's in, Lade's in trouble right now not only are they down uh, huh? and are losing the right hand, or are they getting the right hand side? Well, they're getting the right hand side, but uh, they don't really have an effective counter right now for that uh, that Tiger Ace. Um, they have a Sherman or two and double Calliope's, but uh, they're going to have to get some pretty nice barrages on that to take it down enough for the Shermans to take it out. AT drop coming in from nice from left hand side, I would hope. Yep, there it is, right behind the MG. Another curveball sticky bomb thrown out there. Damaged engine. Amazingly... Another um, Tiger. Yeah. Almost lined up perfectly. Uh, Nubian's Tiger has level 2 vet. Not a bad thing to have. Very... <laughs> wow. Very damaging explosion. And here comes the uh, that first Calliope Barrage. Oh, and they're running right Is into it. it. Oh. oh, no. That one Tiger's getting hit. Rear armor, rear armor, rear armor. That's bad. That took off about Maybe uh, a quarter of its health. So if only he had a Pershing right now. <laughs> Your wish is my command, he says. For the fatherland. No, it's inspired assault in the center. Sorry. Look at this massive amount of infantry battles. It's kind of cool, but and I'm here comes that Pershing that uh, Laid needs so badly right now. Yeah. Finish off that aid. Recoup that early loss for the Pershing. Yep, but is he going to be able to get out of there before the Tiger comes in and takes it out? Where is the Tiger? There it is. 
The ace is holding its own. Look at that. It's not even taking that much damage. Lots going on in the middle. This is just a crazy game. Level 2 vet Doug in the middle might take out that Sherman. Tiger being 5%. Can nice from Lollygagging. Two shell deflections. Oh, the last shot. No, it didn't even get the last <laughs> shot off. Oh, man. Gotta love it. He's gonna try and chase it anyway. Stormtroopers. Oh, Nitro stopped. He stopped. That's, that's, that's good. Yeah, he could have got it out of there. There you go. Uh oh. There's a Calliope I hear right in the middle on top of the storms and the sniper. Oh man, they're in trouble. One little guy, he's hiding. They're cloaked. They're not taking damage. I can't believe it. They survived. Wow. Very nice. Tiger versus AT gun. You never want to have that happen if you can avoid it. Tiger's in trouble here. Nice one just got a bombing oh. run. He may be able to uh, <laughs> maybe able to land a well placed one. Turn this game around. It's gonna be pretty hard. To take down this tank. He's got a repair bunker on the left and level three vet. Pioneer, she squads with them uh, for Savvy Kin. Jesus, there's so much going on, I can't even keep track of it all. Tiger Ace and Tiger on the left, in fairly good condition, getting repaired. Now have assault capability. Either a bombing run or a strafing run. Something, something's coming in. Bombing run? Oh, the Tiger had already moved when he started it there. Otherwise, it almost would have got a direct hit. I think he's attack grounding where that sniper was, trying to kill it. AT guns dropping from on high. Pershing versus yeah. Tiger and Tiger. Late, late plan could have really prepared better for these Tigers. I just really don't feel, feel they had enough armor counter for armor. Um, I think they were relying maybe a little bit too much on, on AT. Because all you saw was one Pershing. And, yeah, two Calliope's on the right, but that's much better against uh, against infantry, such as Grenadiers, than against, you know, two, three Tigers that are spread out pretty well. Yeah. Hey, Sorry, my phone was ringing. I fixed it. Allied High Command was... Trying to uh, the Yankees are grabbing trying to get to us, but we'll have to get back to them. They can wait. I told Patton, hold on a minute. We got we got some propaganda report. I mean, uh, you know, War Office of Information work going on here. So I mean, this has been a massively chaotic game so far. Infantry just charging left and right. Massive amounts of troops from both sides fighting. The middle is neutral. Allies still in big trouble in terms of VPs. They're still behind by quite a bit, managing to take the middle now. Yeah, and in this entire, entire last, I'd say, at least 5-10 minutes, there has been no fighting on the right-hand side. Uh, yeah. So someone tell Reborn to send one Pioneer over there to decap the VP. Yeah, I mean, the best of us fall for that sort of trap where you, you sort of assume that because when you were fighting over there before there was defenses, you know, now there isn't. Pershing is, uh, Dave's Pershing is trying to, trying to do a little damage on the left, just took out the bunker. It's pretty strategically important, but, uh, don't know if he'll be able to survive that Tiger coming up. No, I don't think so. Doing this, a couple Grenadiers. Really gotta get out of there right now. Second Pershing coming up. If he activates field repairs... He might be able to get it out, yeah. He might be, yeah. Oh, I had some little pathfinding bugs there. That that killed it. It might have gotten out of there if it hadn't had that little pathfinding bug where it waited for two or three seconds. 
This is not a winning battle here, though. You're not going to be able to beat a Tiger, Ace, and Panzer Shreks with just a regular Pershing. Maybe a triple vet Pershing will have a chance, but not right now. Yep. I think uh, Savvy is just announcing that he either has or is about to get propaganda war. Yeah. He probably has it. Look at these middle forces that are just like arrayed against each other. We've got one, two, three AT guns. Looks like two Shermans in the middle. Two Tigers about to make a push. Massive amounts of riflemen. Mostly um, pioneers to defend these Tigers. Really need some stormtroopers or something to come in. Oh, we got two Tigers in the north ready to crush. If they came from the, the correct side here, if they came from the right and came down here, they might do a lot of damage. Ooh, ooh. You might be a little sneaky. Let's see if we get what I think we're going to get right over here. Here it comes. Bundled nade. Good placement. Good night. There it is. Take that AT gun. I'd take it, man. Right there. Oh, but there is a sniper around, so I guess he knew about that. What is this? What is this? What is this? Probably a bombing run. Bombing run. Very direct hit on the Tiger. Lots of damage killed. Two squads, too. Not too shabby. Fire assault going off in the center. It's probably going to chew up this rifleman. Another AT truck. Supported Triple by enough gun with Sherman. MP40s is pretty damaging. Uh oh, suppression fire on him. A tiger running havoc in uh, in the base. Indeed. Oh wow! The base trying to take out, trying to take out the Pershing. A uh, couple shell deflections off the front armor. The Pershing could could actually spell the tigers. Oh feet. no! It's, it's turning careful. the wrong way. And yeah, an AT that, drop too. Oh man! Yeah, that was a blunder. If he doesn't take out that Pershing. Yeah! Wow! Oh. That hurt him. Meanwhile, in the middle of the map... Oh, wait, on the right-hand side! They did exactly what you told them. They sent one squad over to the right. They've taken the whole right side now. I said, Pioneers, how dare you worst the good bulk squad on that. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, well. Be the, uh, out, of all, out of all this uh, drama in the center of the map, that could be the deciding, man, uh, the deciding squad to change the game around. Yeah, right? Because right now they just got to keep the pressure on the right hand side, or sorry, the center, the center point. Keep so much pressure on the center that if they, you know, afford to send these two rifle squads over to the right, secure it, it's going to mean that they're going to be down enough resources to let them take the center here. We'll see. We've got manpower blitz as well for the uh, for nihilistic god now. So Double we're sticky bomb. Pershing might be able to take out. Yep, just got rid of the uh, tiger in the center. I missed it. Thought I saw something explode, but I didn't see what it was. I heard it. Aha. Another sticky bomb hits the tiger. And another one drives up to replace it. Good job with this repair bunker and just keeping everything repaired here on the left-hand side. Indeed. Another tiger runs up. Panzer Shreks. Oh, Allied War Machine! Perfect timing with it! And look at this massive rifles. Look at this. Turn and shoot, Tiger! Turn and shoot! So many... So many sticky bombs! Right in the crater, come on! No, bad... What are you turning so slowly for? He's trying to blitz out of there, you see that? It's yeah, working! He's got a damaged engine, but he's blitzkrieging out. That's actually a good, uh, a good tip. Probably, I don't think we even mentioned that. If you have a damaged engine, you really need to save a tiger, and you have the munitions. Use Blitzkrieg because it makes them just as fast as if they didn't have a damaged engine. Yeah, that's not a bad move, I gotta say. <laughs> We've got a bunker here, which I assume he's planning on upgrading. Maybe. Uh, oh, he's he's 
probably upgrading to um, a repair bunker. Unless he already did, and I just can't tell. Yikes, this bunker could use some help. Middle, all three points. Nope, I'm sorry, the right hand side has been recaptured, but two points still in favor of these axes here. Looks like the death throws right now of the allies as they try a desperate push for the middle, but just get crushed by like triple tigers or whatever this is here. Yeah, and also all the repair bunkers. That's uh, that's yeah, that's what that was. Yeah, repair bunkers. Hey, you think about it, you know, the repair bunkers basically to get the upgrades, the cost of like one and a half sticky bombs, and then the manpower is kind of negligible in a long game like this. So, pretty pretty cheap for you know getting. Unlimited supply of uh, pine, repair pioneers. If anything quite close to that, uh, the bunker probably is what. What I'm saying is, <laughs> the bunker is very uh, utilitarian. It's got a lot of uses, and uh, allies don't really have too much in the way to compare to that. I hear you. We have a sneaky rifle squad in the north here. <laughs> gonna get countered by a by a armored car. That's why it's good to have an armored car hanging around. You know, don't don't throw it away if it's becomes less useful later in the game because there's tanks everywhere. Keep it for those kind of situations. Very true. AT guns firing from all directions at this tank in the middle. Allies have taken the point on the left now. A tiger's there, but somehow the allies took it. I think it might have been an airborne squad. Is that what's retreating? No, those are engineers retreating. Let's see. Game's about to about to wrap up. Uh, definitely, I think about ten minutes ago, uh, there wasn't enough preparation for the tigers. Um, yeah, just level three vet tigers for the win. Yeah, they're very difficult to beat. I wouldn't mind seeing all the tanks, all the heavy tanks, increase to a thousand manpower, maybe. I don't know if that would really help, but I don't, I don't know. I still feel like it's too heavy tank spammy, the, ge the, the meta game is right now. Even if you limit them to one, that doesn't really help the situation I, as far as I'm concerned. Maybe in team games it helps, but I, yeah. I still feel like the, the end game, especially in team games, is always going to be dominated by heavy tanks if they're you know, in their current state. Especially when you get the triple veterancy on them, like you said, with the Tigers. Well, especially with blitz, with uh, you know manpower blitz, being able to get two tigers pretty much in, within 30 seconds of each other. Well, it's changed so you can only, you can only get one now in opposing fronts anyway. But I just I just I'm not convinced that that will fix people spamming tiger after tiger after tiger. It just means that you know they'll build maybe a Volk squad or a machine gun or something in between. Yeah. Where the hell did all these riflemen just Good come question. From? Holy crap. Propaganda, anybody? You get like four squads in a row. Yeah, you know, I was just thinking about it, and although uh, Lady by a Hobo decided not to check up, really, really, really could have used something other than the you know, I mean, everyone else I should have checked up was really the only one with the Sherman. I'm not sure. I'm, I, I'm pretty sure that Dave was pretty much Pershing spamming, but what what was all these riflemen really going to do uh, against, especially once the Tigers rolled out? So I didn't really think uh, that might have been a reason why uh, Lade wasn't able to take take the win. Lack of uh, teching up by uh, Lade by a hobo. Yeah, so we would we should have seen a few more Shermans because there wasn't. I mean, that's the problem. There's so many Shreks, though. It's like, what are you gonna do? Oh no! Yeah. That's sort of my biggest metagame complaints right now is the uh, the heavy tanks dominating the late game and uh, the Shreks and the Allied AT gun being a little bit too effective for their cost right now, which sort of obsolesce uh, obsolescence the the regular tanks the Panzer IVs the Stugs the Shermans good games being exchanged pretty competitive pretty close game for a good chunk of it 
lots of action back and forth, left and right, left and right, back and forth. But above all, the Axis held two points most of the game and three points at some point at some parts of the game. And the Tiger spam just can't be stopped. Yeah. <laughs> the tier, it used to be the Tier 3. I remember playing this in beta and, and in the fall. And the Tier 3 to Tiger spam was incredibly hard to beat. And you needed to have the Imba Calliope in order to beat it because <laughs> there was so little fuel on this map. And uh, it really favored Tier 3, especially when Pumas were, you know, 25 fuel now. You know, now they're 35 and Stugs are 50 compared to, you know, and M10s weren't really as good as they are now back then. So you really needed the, the Imba Calliope to, uh, to break even. I, I always felt this map was a little Axis-centric. Uh, I just, maybe it was the start location in the north is a little bit superior. Probably not that. I just think that there's uh, a lot, even though it looks like a rather open map, there's a lot of choke points on it. It oh, really yeah. is a, a choke point map. It's not not quite the Montherm type choke point map. Really, two avenue of of approach to the entire left side. There's two to the on the right side from from you know north or south, and then you have you know two access points from you know the or what is it, two and then so two kind of on the just off off center to the right and two off center to the left. So. There's really, you know, four or five major, major choke points, and uh, of course, Axis does better when there's choke points. So, I don't know. You think this is uh, an Axis dominant map, or is it just uh, this is just the way this particular particular game played out? Yeah, I think I think it might be Axis leaning. I don't think it's completely Axis dominant. I think the meta game right now makes it so it's very difficult once you get the, the triple veterancy tiger spam going, especially from two blitz players, when you can have four regular tigers and a tiger ace on the game, on the map at the same time. Unless you got everybody on the allied side going armor and getting Pershings, that's very difficult to counter. You don't have the Shreks that you can fight with long range. If you want to try and take out tigers with riflemen, you got to charge in there, and two tigers shooting at a horde of riflemen charging is going to chew them to pieces before they get there. So yeah, you get, what, two sticky bombs off? Then you have to retreat the two guys that are left alive, and meanwhile they go and repair their tigers at the repair station. So Exactly. Yeah, so I think just... Uh I think what do we have? We had right side of right side of armor, left side of armor, and then uh, left side of airborne. Um, I definitely think laid by Hobo's choice not to not to tech up it really hurt uh, hurt the laid team in in this one. But uh, you know, grats grats to both clans. I think uh, our our show definitely endorses all COH clans. So if laid wants to submit a replay where they rocked reborn, then uh, maybe we'll use it. <laughs> <laughs> to make up, we gotta be fair. Yeah, fair and balanced. Yes, that's yes. the that's the propaganda. I mean, War Office of Information way. All right, so I guess that's it for uh, for this video replay review here, episode number forty-seven. We're really looking forward to bringing you guys some opposing fronts video replay reviews, but obviously can't do that when there's no replay system in place, but hopefully we'll get that sometime in the near future, in the beta. Very much looking forward to seeing how that plays out. Metagame is changing on a daily basis in the beta. That's what makes it so exciting. Plus, the British are so hard to beat when they get their stupid... Alright, that's that's for another show. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Remember to send us your questions, comments, emails to GameFire.com. Tales of at GameFire.com to be explicit or expectant or something else that means the same thing. Yeah, so, replays also we're looking for. Tales of at GameFire.com, T-A-L-E-S-O-F <clears throat> at GameFire.com. For Vittensby, I am Bridger. Thanks for tuning in. <laughs>